Streaming services. The easiest way to make a billion dollars and get sued by Taylor Swift at the same time. All you need is a little bit of this stuff, plus billions of dollars in venture funding. Unfortunately, I'm far too broke to help you with that second part, but let's see what we can do about that first part. As for tech, we're going to be using React with Next.js, Tailwind CSS, and HowlerJS. This isn't much of a React tutorial, so if you don't already know React, it's probably best that you learn that first. That said, if you don't know Next.js specifically, no worries, we aren't going to be using any Next.js specific features, so just follow the setup instructions and you should be good to go. Tailwind CSS is a utility-first CSS framework. Yes, I know that meant nothing to me either when I first heard it, but all that you really need to know is that rather than having classes like BTN, like we might have in something like Bootstrap to apply a bunch of styles to a button, we just have classes like P-4, which apply a padding of four to an element, or Flex, which adds display flex to an element, which is very, very helpful for keeping styles consistent throughout our app. HowlerJS is where we get some of the fun stuff. So. Howler is a wrapper around the web audio API and the HTML5 audio tag, which helps us play audio on the web efficiently. It includes some super useful stuff such as fallback logic, where it attempts to use the web audio API first, then falls back to HTML5 audio only when needed. It allows us to use multiple different file formats for the same audio track, deferring to the first one, then using the others only when they're needed, giving us a great balance between efficiency and user experience. It does some other really cool stuff, such as allow you to manage the cache on the client, providing support for audio sprites, and making it super easy to pan tracks left and right. Though we won't be going into some of the specifics of that too much, feel free to check out their GitHub and learn more about what you can do with Howler. Okay, so before we get too deep, I want to take a quick look at what we're actually going to be building today. So, fairly straightforward here, we've got a couple of tracks here in the middle, we can click on one of these to play them and see what it sounds like. Click on another one. Play and pause this guy up here. And change volume. Relatively straightforward. I uh, just figured I'd give you guys a look before we got started. Let's get into writing some code. Awesome, all right, we're ready to get started. So what you're gonna see that I have here is some documentation from Tailwind CSS. This is gonna be a really easy kind of one, two, three step method on how we can get started with Next.js and Tailwind. You can see I also have an empty VS code over here with an empty directory. If I type ls down here, you see nothing in there, nothing in my VS code. So we gotta spin this project up. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do if you scroll down a little bit is an npx command like this. So npx create next app, and then we give it a project name. That project name can be whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine notify, click enter. This might take a second. Cool, so we're done installing. Let's clear this, type ls. Now we have a directory called notify. So I'll go cd notify, clear. Now let's check out VS code. There we go, we've got some files in here. The next step is to actually install Tailwind CSS. Just gonna copy this. So we're gonna install a couple of dev dependencies. Tailwind CSS, obviously, post CSS and auto prefixer. Let's try this, Just this shouldn't take too long. Awesome, yep, a couple of seconds. Next line right here. I want you to take a look really quick at your project structure here. You're gonna see this next command to actually spin up. Tailwind is gonna add a couple of files here. So let's take a look at that. Yep, there we go. What I want you to actually look at here is this tailwind.config.js file. We're gonna do a couple of things in here. Um, some of this is gonna be listed right here. So you can actually read this to see exactly what we're doing, but add the paths uh, to all of your template files in your tailwind.config.js file. Essentially, this is just anywhere you want this to actually work. So you can copy exactly what we have here, drop it in content. So I copied that. I can click enter like this. Paste that on in, and that should be about it. Okay, no, one last step. So inside of our global CSS file, so if you go in your VS code, you come to styles, and then you click globals.css, this can essentially be blank. So we can completely reset this file. I'm gonna go ahead and do a command A, backspace, and then I'm gonna copy all of this stuff. This is gonna give us a CSS reset, as well as all the stuff that we actually need for Tailwind to work. So that runs. Let's just see if I do a, uh, and oops, npm run dev. This should open on localhost 3000. So I'm gonna get a new tab, host 3000, and there we go. Cool, so we've got a basic next app uh, set up here. 
Awesome, so now we've got a Next.js app up and running. The next thing I wanna do is install Howler. So I'm gonna go back over to my terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. And I'm gonna run an npm install Howler is the name of the package. This is the only extra package we don't already have that we're gonna to need to install. So I'm gonna click enter and let that run. Cool, looks like that's done. Uh, there is one more thing that we should do before we actually get off this Tailwind stuff. So I'm going to go back over to my tailwind.config.js file. And one thing I want to explain about Tailwind, I said this a little bit earlier in the video, but Tailwind is extendable. So you'll be able to see this theme object here. You can add styles in this file that you can use throughout the rest of your app. So I'm going to go ahead and paste some in and then I'll explain them. You can either just copy what I wrote here or you can get this off of my GitHub. So let's see, go ahead, paste this stuff in here. Cool. Yep. Yeah, so this should be relatively readable. Um, so these colors up here with Tailwind, you're, you can write things like text dash some color. So I could do text dash brand in this case, by the way, I pulled all these colors just directly from Spotify's website. So this brand color here is going to be like that green color that Spotify uses for the logo and everything. And then these other colors are different variations of whites and blacks and grays that we're just going to use to kind of make it look how I showed in that little demo earlier. Um, below that, we have this grid template columns thing. What this is going to let me do is type essentially grid dash, and that's going to give you a display of grid and then going to give you this specific grid. What you're going to see here is 85 pixels and then 10 evenly spaced fractions than another 85 pixels. I'm not gonna go a whole lot into grid right now. I'll go a little bit more into it later. But all you need to know is that this is gonna let me with one line in my uh, HTML or in my in my JSX, I'm gonna be able to write grid dash player. And then I'm gonna get a grid that looks like this. So moving on from that, next step is gonna be to delete some of the unnecessary files. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. I'm gonna open up my file explorer. And there's a handful of things I can delete here. So I can delete this home.module.css. We're not going to need that anymore. Move to trash. We're going to go to pages. This whole API thing here, we can delete that. Cool. If I click index.js, I should be able to remove this line right here. So this is that module.css file. Go ahead and delete that. I can delete most of the stuff in here. So this whole main and footer piece. I'm just going to yank that out of there, click save. Oh, and I can also delete this image at the top. Let's see, is there anything else in here that we don't want? Styles, I think that's just about it. So that should give us kind of a blank canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and type npm run dev again, refresh, and we should be able to see if anything exploded. Okay, styles is not defined. Oh, yep. Okay, that makes sense. So pop back over here. We're using, this is the index.js file. We have to delete this line as well. Delete. Cool, now we have a blank canvas. That's exactly what we want. So we are gonna add one more CSS file. Uh, I'm not gonna write all of this just because it's super annoying, but let's see, we'll do, we'll call it volume.css. We're gonna put this under the styles directory. And I'm gonna copy this as well from my other project. See, where do we have it here? Volume.css, copy that over there, paste it in here. Again, go to my GitHub. Don't even try and copy this from here. I'll put something on the screen right now to show you where you can find this. So go ahead and click save. All that this stuff does is it's gonna add some styles to that little range slider that lets you change the volume. Uh, trying to style a slider if you've never tried is super, super annoying. So this is just gonna upfront give us the styles that we want. Feel free to read through this, play around with it, but we're not gonna explain this right now. Um, once we have that done, so one more step, we have to add an underscore document file. So I added, or I pulled up some documentation for this. Um, all we really care about with this is that we wanna add some styles to the global body tag. Let me do this a couple of pluses here so you can actually read it. So we can copy this whole thing. This is gonna go at the same level as app dot, or underscore app.js and index.js over here. So we can click new file. I can type underscore document.js and I can copy all of this stuff over here. I'm going to copy, paste. And this is going to give us like a skeleton for making any changes that we might want to make to the actual document itself. 
Uh, this is going to be loaded onto any route that we have on our app. But what I want to be able to do with this, we only really have one route, so it's not it's not like we completely need this. But what we do need this for is to add a little bit of stylings. So let me copy this from my other screen on this body here. I'm going to paste this stuff in, click Save. So now we're actually going to be able to see some Tailwind. So if I come, I kind of come over here. You're going to see this kind of autocomplete like this if you've installed the extension. Uh, actually, let me see if I can show you that. So if I go to extensions, click Tailwind. Cool. Yep. So you have this, this Tailwind CSS extension, which you can, if you're using VS Code, that's going to give you kind of some of this pretty autocomplete type stuff inside of your JSX. I'm going to close that down. But all we're doing here is we're setting the global background of the entire page to this dash background. This is defined where I was talking about in our tailwind.config.js. So right here, we have this background. We could also do some of the default colors. So if I pop back over, I could do something like BG dash white, and it's gonna give me a white background, or I could do something like black dash or over 70, and that'll give me black with an opacity of 70. We don't wanna do that. We wanna do this specific color that we added. Then we're gonna set the default text color to this text faded. We're going to set a text size of small, and then we're gonna set a min height of the entire screen. This way, as I come back over here, actually, I'm gonna go back over to the app. Now we're gonna have this kind of like black, this like grayish black background. And if we add any text in here, it's gonna to default to a color that we actually want it to default to. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Oh, there was one thing I think I actually missed. So with that CSS file that we added, that's not the one, this volume.css, we actually have to import this. We import this in app.js. I'm gonna close some of these other files. So if I see underscore app.js, click that. You're gonna see we already have this globals.css imported. I'm just gonna duplicate that and type in volume. Make sure there's no spelling error. So volume matches with volume. Beautiful, cool. So this is the complete setup for this project. If you've got to here, your project's good to go. Refresh, make sure I didn't just mess anything up. Nope, looks like we're good, nothing in the console. Awesome, let's get into writing the actual code. Okay, so let's lay this thing out. I've opened over here the other project kind of as an example, so we can actually look at this while we lay everything out. Uh, I also did forget one package, so you'll see if I stop this. I installed React Icons. Let me go up a couple of times. Yeah, so if you've never heard of this React Icons package, it's just going to give us some of these pack or some of these icons, such as the Spotify icon, the little play pause, this little guy over here, this little clock. That's pretty much it. Uh, the easiest way to do this is just npm install React Icons, and then we can just pull from there. If you actually go to their website, you can get a list. They have thousands and thousands of icons. We're only going to be using a couple, so just go ahead, run this. I've already ran it, and then whenever that has installed. We're going to go ahead and start the dev server again. So let's restart this. And we should still be at the same point with just this black screen like this. So if you're not familiar with how routing works in Next.js, uh, this index.js route right here, or this index.js file rather is going to be our slash route. If I had a file in here called something like home.js, we can do an example really quick. So I want to say home.js. I'll just make an empty thing like this, save it. Then we could go to slash home. And we should see, yep, home like that. That's pretty much how it works. Your index.js file is just gonna essentially be slash. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that file I just made and go back to index. So index is going to hold, is gonna be essentially like the, the top level wrapper for all of the rest of our files. This is where everything's gonna live. Um, specifically, it's going to be the, the parent for this header itself and for these tracks down here, as well as hold a little bit of state for what song is playing and whether or not it's playing. Relatively straightforward. We're going to go through all this pretty quick. You're going to see that I have this components directory that I made. Go ahead and right click on your project file, click new folder. And then I just want you to make four empty files like this. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I've got. So I just have a file called header one called table header, one called track, and one called tracks. So header, as you might expect, is gonna represent this guy up here. Tracks is going to be everything below that, so everything kind of below this darker black piece, all the way down to these guys right here. 
tracks is gonna be the actual tracks themselves, where table header is gonna be this, and then one track is gonna be representative of one track. So if I hover over one of these and they change color like that, that's, that's one track. I'm kinda gonna pull a little bit of a fire ship on this and do this pretty quick so we can get straight to the, the fun stuff. So I've already got everything kind of written. If I undo here, we can kind of see everything as opposed to having to write it every single time. So starting with our header file, this isn't actually imported yet, so I guess we can actually do that. So let's come to our index.js and let's just import that header file. Click save, go back over to our project. We don't have anything in here yet. Come back over to header. And the first thing we wanna do is just make kind of this, it doesn't need to be that big, let's do something like that is make this black header piece up here with the Notify and little Spotify logo, as well as the volume slider and the play button. So we've defined those colors like we've talked about in the config file. So I'm gonna give it a background of header, which I defined with the full padding of four. If you hover any of these again, so that's a padding of one rem. So padding four, I could do padding two, padding eight, etc. And then just some normal flex stuff. So this is gonna give it a display of flex, align item center and justify content uh, space between. So that's gonna be our wrapper, kind of undo here. This piece on the left, if I save, we can actually look at it. So that's gonna be our little Notify logo like this. I've imported this BS Spotify from React icons slash BS. If you do slash and just look at the files, there's a whole bunch of directories in here with different icons that you can use. Sweet, oh, there we go. So there's a bunch of different icons in there that you can use. We're gonna be taking everything from this BS with a, I, I think is bootstrap, but I'm, I'm not positive off the top of my head. You can check the documentation. So anyways, yep. Yeah, so now we have this kind of left piece with a display of flex, item center. We have our logo like this, which I've given a text of text light, which is the color that we defined, a size of 30 pixels. And then on this notify text, again, text light, margin left of two, oops. Margin left of two to give it some space from that logo, font bold, text to Excel. As you can see, that's what we got. Undo one more time. Now we've got, or two more times rather. We can start from here. We've got this little input range, which if I save, you can see this is already styled because of that CSS file that I had you download earlier. Just a range, normal range with a, a max value of 100, defaulting at full volume. It expects an on change. I've just given it an empty function for now. And then I've given a cursor of pointer. So whenever you actually hover it, you get the little cur cursor like that. Then a button for play pause with this play fill icon, which I've also imported from React icons. Text light, background of brand, which is another color that we defined earlier. Padding of two, rounded full. That's just gonna give you a border radius of 50%, something like that. Actually, that's so they use 999 pixels. But it's just gonna make it a circle and then a margin left of four. And then again, a stubbed out on click like this. So that's gonna be our header file. This is all good. Clicking this doesn't do anything yet. This doesn't actually do anything yet, but we have our everything laid out like this. Go ahead and close that. The next thing we want is tracks. So I'm gonna undo this. So we've got that tracks file imported. I can actually open it. We don't have anything in here just yet. The first thing we're gonna make is that table header. So again, this tracks component is gonna house both this kind of header piece like this, as well as the tracks themselves. So undo this a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, padding and, and margin to this just to start. So I've set the width at full, given it a padding uh, on the x-axis of four, which is one rem, on the y-axis of 0.5. Play with this, this isn't super important, but we'll just start with that. And then we're going to start with our table header. So I should already have this defined and imported. I can go ahead and just delete this stuff for now actually. So now in our tracks, we have this table header file, which I can open over here. Doesn't have anything yet, but in a moment, it's gonna have all this stuff. So let's click back over here and see what we actually have. Uh, we're doing a little bit of interesting grid stuff here. So actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this right here so you can actually see all of this. Uh, just typing grid like this is gonna give you a display of grid. And then grid calls, if you've ever used grid, grid before, is gonna define your grid columns. I've defined my own as we would have seen earlier inside of our Tailwind config. So I defined one called player. It's essentially gonna give me a 12 column grid where the left and rightmost columns are a fixed 85 pixels. And then there's 10 evenly spaced rows in the middle to play with. You can kind of see that, oh, let me make this a little smaller. 
in the real version, if I make this kind of bigger and smaller, you can see from this hashtag to the title and then from the clock all the way to the right, those stay the same size and then the middle kind of will move with the size of the screen. So that's what we're doing there. Got a grid with a grid column set to that variable, margin X auto, padding Y of two, padding X of four, margin bottom of two. Uh, here's one thing I, you might not have seen yet. So border bottom of one pixel. So if I hover this, it's gonna say border bottom width one pixel. The reason I'm doing it like this is the smallest value they'll actually let you type is two, uh, but you can do square braces like this and add in any value you want. And then I'm giving it a border color of that border, which we defined in our config file. So that's gonna be the wrapper. We'll kind of go one column at a time. So column span of one for that little hashtag. That's gonna be that fixed kind of 85 pixel width, 85 pixel right. Yep, so 85 pixel width, the text of text light, span five for the title, span five again for album, undo one more. And then we just have this little clock icon, which I've imported from React icons right here, with the text light call span of one. The reason I made this 10, let me actually go back over to ours. Yep, there we go. So now we have our, our heading like this. The reason I made this uh, 10 kind of evenly spaced, spaced pieces is you can do something like four and six and you'll get slightly differently spaced or slightly different spacing in the middle. But for right now, I'm just gonna keep it at five and five. So we have one 85 pixel at the beginning, 85 at the end, and then these ones in the middle will just kind of flex uh, to whatever size they need to be flexed to. So that's the table header, we'll undo that, and then we'll go over to track. Uh, in the next part of this lesson, in you know five or 10 minutes, you're gonna actually see a whole lot of logic going on in here, but for right now, we're just gonna lay this out. So let's import one track to start, and we'll just hard code it. We will have maybe three or four tracks, which will be in a list and will be mapped over to actually give some dynamic actual data, but for right now, we'll just hard code one. Shouldn't see anything just yet. I pop back over to track, we can start going down. Again, we're gonna use that kind of play pause icon like that. So we're gonna import that. The wrapper is gonna look very similar to the one for the table header. So we're gonna have display of grid, grid columns, player again, margin X audio or auto, padding X of four, padding Y of two, rounded small, transition colors. So this is gonna just, whenever you hover over a, uh, hover like this, you're gonna get some kind of transition between them besides a, a hard stop. And we're gonna say hover, so you can do hover animations and things like that with this little colon like this. So hover colon BG dash hover, which is another color that I specified in our config file. And then a cursor of pointer. If I go one more, so this is gonna be the leftmost piece. So we're gonna have a column span of one, flex item center, this represents kind of this little picture as well as this icon here. So I just have play fill right here, the size of 20 pixels, and then an image with a width and height of 40 pixels, and then a margin left of two to give us some space between the actual image and the icon. If I pop back over here, click, oops, click save. Now we have an image. The image I'm using is just from Unsplash. So you can copy this exact same thing. It's just gonna serve you up just kind of a random image at whatever size you specify. So I'm saying slash 40 slash 40. I could say slash 1900 slash 900 and it would give me something that size. Um, so super, super useful just for placeholder images like this. Let's go back one more step. This next piece is this title piece, which includes both uh, kind of the name of the song as well as the artist. So it's gonna have a column span of five, display flex, uh, using flex column, item start, justify start, and then we're gonna say text white with a font weight of semi bold, and then just another span that just says me for right now. So this will have dynamic data in just a little bit that says the name of the song as well as who made it. But for right now, we've got something that looks like this. Go back one more step. So this is gonna be pretty much copy paste. So column span of five, display a flex, Item center, justify center, and this is the album name. We're just calling it my, my album for now. Next piece is gonna be the time. So column span one, that's that last 85 pixels. Flex, item center, justify center, and then give it some random time. If I save this, there we go. If I give it a hover, we have that little transition animation like that. Clicking it doesn't do anything just yet, um, but I think this is looking good. So let's go back over to tracks really quick and just copy paste down a few times so we can see. This is what it would look like if we had a few. And that's what we're gonna to get to in the next lesson. So let's work on actually hooking this up with Howler. 
All right, sweet. So now it's time to actually hook this up to make some noise. First things first, I've added a couple of MP3 files here. You can go and steal these from my GitHub if you want, or you can get your own, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna show you how we can do what I was talking about earlier, where you can have multiple different file types. For this, I just have one file type, um, but if you have a WAV files or any other type of file, Slack file, any kind of audio file, it should work. Um, and you can even use multiple, I'll kind of show you that. But like I said, for right now, we're just gonna use these MP3s. So steal these, get your own, doesn't really make much of a difference. Awesome, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to tracks. So if we go to our components, we click tracks. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna paste in some kind of example tracks here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click paste. You're gonna see I have a couple of tracks here. I'm gonna close down two of these. Um, as of right now, like you would have seen earlier, we have everything hard coded. So if I open track.js, we have a couple of things in here. So we have an image, we have song name, artist name, album, and then duration. We want this to, we want to kind of mock that this is actually coming from a database or something. So that's pretty much what I have here. I have three objects that I've defined that have this specific shape. I've given them some ID, a source, and the source is just going to be kind of the, where the tracks are coming from. You could also do something like this, like I was talking about, and have, say, also dot .wave, have multiple sources. We're just gonna go with one. So that's gonna be, if you're using Next.js and you have something in your public directory, you can just call it like this. So say you had, you know, my song dot .wave, you could call this my song dot .wave, so long as it's in your public directory. Uh, then I just have a title, I have an artist name, an album name, an image source, which I'm just copy pasting that same unsplash source, and then some hard coded du uh, duration. I have actually compared these with the MP3s themselves, so they have the right duration, but not. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. So, however you actually want to do that, feel free. Now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and click save. Instead of doing this kind of mapping of the tracks like this, or I guess the hard coding of the tracks like this. We're gonna go ahead and map over each track. Track. We'll go tracks.map, and we're gonna take the track, put this in another set of parentheses. I'm also gonna take the index, I'll call it idx, you'll see why in a little bit. And then, oops, we're gonna go ahead and return a track. In React, we're gonna to have to give this a key, so we'll say key equals track.id. Go ahead and save that. See, we have three right now. We're not actually passing anything in. This is totally fine. So this is, this should be a, uh, a solid start. Before I actually drill these props down into this track and actually hook everything up, I am gonna go up one level. Uh, one second here. So I'm gonna go up one level to index.js and I wanna define some state here. Uh, the reason I wanna define some state here is we're gonna have some shared state between the header itself and this list of tracks just for tracking things like which song is playing and whether or not it's playing. So that is going to look like this. So I'll just paste this in. So we're gonna have selected howl. So that's gonna be the howl object that's currently playing. Of course, a setter, as well as just a Boolean flag that sets whether or not it's actually playing. The reason we don't pull this off of the Howl object is because of kind of reactivity within React. If we tried to listen to something inside of the Howl object for whether or not something was playing, you'd kind of have to do a bunch of janky stuff. And in this case, it's a little bit easier to just have one more piece of state to kind of set whether or not something's playing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let me look back over at my notes over here. Oh yeah, okay, so now we're gonna drill all of this down a level. And again, I'm gonna just copy paste. For right now, we're just gonna go down to tracks. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill all of these down. Oh, oops, what did I do wrong here? Use state, not defined, of course. So let's go ahead and import use state. Save, awesome. So now we're drilling each of these props down. So we're dripping, drop, or drilling down playing, set playing, selected howl, and set selected howl. We can take all of these and take them in as props inside of tracks. You can either just type props and then refer to everything by props, or you can destructure them like this, which I like to do. So something like this. Now we've got all of these accessible to us. One moment, let's look back over here and see what I gotta do. Okay, so we've mapped over everything. We're gonna drill this all down one more layer to each of the tracks. Let's see here. 
this is going to look something like this. So for each track, go ahead and pass down all of these props. Uh, what do we have here? Index is not fine. Oops, IDX. Index equals equals zero. Awesome, so everything besides this last one here. So we have key, so that's just the track's ID. We have the track itself, we have, which is coming from this kind of map here. Then we have these four other props that we're drilling down. So these are kind of the global props. And I've also added this is first track prop. The reason I'm doing this is I wanna default w the first track that's created to actually set the state, like the global state that we just defined up in index.js. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. For right now though, I'm just gonna do it kind of this fairly straightforward way. So inside of track, we're gonna have some code that says, if this is the first track, then run the set, set state function for Howl. So run set selected Howl on whichever Howl object was actually created. So one sec, go ahead and comment these out over on my other screen. Awesome, so now we can go down to an individual track and we can take in all of these props. So that's gonna look something like this. Awesome, so now we have access to all of these props for each track drilled all the way down to a specific trap track. The first thing I wanna do is kinda actually define some of this state. So we'll just do some of the uh, the, the kind of base state for like the, the song title, stuff like that. So let's see what we actually have here. We've got the image source. So starting with image source, should look something like this. We've got this stuff right here, let's see. So we've got the track title and the artist, and then we've got the duration and the album name. So if we replace all of this like this, click save. Now you should see you actually have your, your values passed down like this as opposed to the hard-coded values. There, okay, let's see. Let's, let's go back up and actually hook this up before we get to toggling this play pause thing dependent on, on the state. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is actually define some track for holding our Howl object. That is gonna be relatively straightforward. Use state looks something like this. And now for how we're actually gonna run kind of the setter for creating our Howl object. So here's where we're actually gonna be able to start making some noise. So we're gonna use a use effect hook. It should look something like this. And this use effect hook is dependent on any time the track changes. Uh, this should remain relatively static. You actually could probably leave this blank. But for sake of doing this correctly, we'll go ahead and call that track. Now I'm gonna define my Howl object. So we'll say new Howl equal to new Howl, which Howl we'll import here in a second. Let's see. Oops, it helps if I do that in caps. Oh, Howl. Yeah, it's not gonna auto import that for me. So start working with Howler here. And go ahead and import Howl from Howler. Make sure you don't import uh, howler like this, there's two exports. This howler object with a, the ER at the end is gonna give you kind of global options. We'll work with that whenever we get to this, this header stuff up here. For an individual sound, you just want the individual howl like this. So we're gonna make a new howl. It's gonna have a couple of settings here. So it's gonna have a source, which is going to be track.source, I believe is what we called it. Uh, let me double check that that's right. Let's see, tracks, source, perfect. So track.source. Uh, there's a handful of other options you can pass in here. So you could pass in, for instance, if you wanted to loop, you could say true, and then it would keep looping over and over again on that song, unless you say otherwise. We'll go ahead and add that just so you can play around with that if you'd like. We have an autoplay attribute, which we'll set to false. I think this actually defaults to false, but if you set it to true, Howler will try to uh, do some things to get around the browser's kind of security features for stopping automatically playing audio in, in browsers like Chrome. Uh, it works in some browsers, it doesn't in others, but we'll just go ahead and set that to false. You can toggle things like HTML5. So if you wanna force this to use HTML5 audio, which is potentially better for longer audio files, uh, you can set that to true. I'm not gonna do that. And there's a bunch of other stuff you can set with this. So if you wanna check out the documentation, you can see there's a whole bunch of different stuff. You could set the volume to start, which volume is uh, zero to one. So you could say, start this at 50% volume. Not gonna do that for right now, but go ahead and play around with that if you'd like. So once we've set this, 
we can set our state. So we can say set Howell is new Howell. And what I also want to do is say if this is the first track. So if is first track, then I want to set my global Howler state. So set selected Howl to this new Howl. Oops, new Howl. Just like that. So now we've kind of got a sound created and we've sorted in our state in everywhere that we need to. Once that is done, we just need a way to actually make this thing play. So I'm gonna go ahead and define a function. We'll set, call it toggle play. Say const, oops, const toggle play. Just do an, a fat arrow function like this. And where do we want that to actually trigger? So we wanna trigger this if we just click on this outside div. So we'll just say on click and we'll trigger toggle play. That is totally fine for right now. And okay, so how do we actually wanna do this? So if the howl is playing, so there's a couple of methods on here that are gonna be useful for us. So we can say howl.playing. This would be a little easier if we're using TypeScript, we'd get some autocomplete here, but if the howl is already playing, so this is just gonna be a Boolean that comes back to say whether or not the current howl is actually playing, then I'm going to get go ahead and pause it. So we'll say howl.pause. We'll say set, oops. Go ahead and say set playing to false. So remember the set playing is that, that global state that we're using for whether or not the song is currently playing or not. And we'll just return from the function. We'll say that's done. If not, then we actually just want to uh, start playing. So this block of code is just gonna say, if you re-clicked on a, on a song that was already playing, then go ahead and pause it uh, and set the state, the global state as paused. If that's not the case, then we can do selected howl. So there is a case that a, you clicked on a song. So maybe I clicked on this song, but this one is playing. In that case, we wanna pause whichever howl is actually selected. So we'll say selected howl.playing. If that's the case, we're gonna use a double and just keep this a little bit more precise. Then we'll say selected howl.pause like that. Then we'll go ahead and say set playing true. We'll say howl.play. So play the current howl. And we will set the selected howl as whatever the current howl is, just like that. So now if I click on one of these, we should actually hear some noise. Go ahead and refresh that. Cool, awesome. So we've got some noise. After we've done this, there's kind of one more thing that we actually need to do in here, which is if a song is playing or not, we wanna to toggle this little icon over here to be the right icon. So I'm gonna paste this in and I'll explain it. Let's see, it's gonna look something like this. So the selected howl equals equals howl piece, you're just checking your, this, this iteration of tracks howl state with what, whichever one is selected. So if those match and we're actively playing, then I wanna show a pause icon, else I wanna show a play icon. I think I have to import this pause one. So go ahead and do that really quick. Pause fill. Now we should see a toggle. Tweet. Perfect. So this is pretty much what we need to do as far as the individual tracks. The next thing we wanna do is hook up everything for the header bar. Let me double check and make sure that's correct. Um, yep, okay. So the next thing we wanna do is hook up this header bar. So let's go ahead, we can close this file, add this one up and close this as well. And let's open, this is from our index.js file. We'll go ahead and open up this header file right here we're going to have to drill down those props from index. So that's going to look like this moment. So we wanna pass down whether or not we're currently playing and then be able to toggle both whether or not we're playing and whatever the currently selected howl is. Uh, we don't wanna actually toggle the howl from here, so we don't need to pass down set selected howl. We only need to do that whenever we're clicking on one of these. So don't worry about passing that one down. If we come into the header itself, we can go ahead and destructure our props like this. Same ones we just passed down. And let's see, what do we actually need to kind of toggle here? So we can do that same trick that we did, let's see, on our play pause button down here. So we can go ahead and go like this. We're gonna have to import this as well. 
Let's see. Like this. So this is kind of the same code we had just written at the uh, single track level, just minus the selected howl. We don't care if we're actually play pausing on the selected howl. We just care if we're playing at all. This again is this this button shown right here. So now if I play one of these, you'll see that this icon changes. So that's all we really need for that. Um, as far as aesthetic changes, that's the only thing we need. Then we just need a function for toggling which song is playing and actually changing volume. So this is where we're gonna we're yeah, this is where we're going to get into that other class from Howler I was talking about, the H O W L E R instead of H O W L for changing volume. So we're gonna make a function called uh, we'll say handle volume change. Volume oops change. That is going to take in an event. And then we're gonna do something like this. So howler, we need to import from howler. So import howler from howler and this this howler object like i said affects all of these individual howl objects so this will have something on it like dot volume and this is the global volume for all of the howls not just the individual howl uh what we want to actually do here we're going to be passing this function on our input range i think we just pass it right in so we can just replace this stubbed function we have right here this is on this range zero to 100, which is gonna give you a value anywhere from zero to 100 as a string. We wanna parse that as an integer and then turn it into a value from zero to one because that's what Howler's gonna be actually wanting to get. So we're gonna do something like parse int and we want to use e.target.value. That's gonna give us that string representation actually coming from the input. I'm gonna make sure this parses it correctly and then we're going to divide that value by 100 and this all will just give us a value whenever we change this slider input like this between zero and one and it's going to be a number or a float as opposed to a string so we could try that out awesome all right so now we just want to oh wait oops Okay, yeah, so looks like this is working. So now we just want to make sure that this toggle button right here works. So we're gonna have another toggle play function. We'll just call it toggle play. This is not gonna take any params and this is going to get triggered anytime that we click on our button down here. So we can replace this stubbed out function like that. Obviously right now this isn't gonna do anything. So the first thing I want to do is say if we actually don't have a howl yet, so if we don't have a, a chosen howl, you know, this could happen really, really quickly. Uh, so the first time you load the page, if no, none of the global state has been set, we're going to go ahead and do that. Make sure that we're not trying to call some functions that don't exist. Uh, just kind of a safeguard. But so long as we do, we should pass that check. Say if we're playing, we want to pause the selected howl. So selected howl.pause and set playing false Oops. else we want to kind of do the same thing just in reverse right so if it's playing we want to pause it else we want to play it so play true and that should give us what we want so let's give that a shot pause play pause play volume Awesome, and now we've got a basic little media player.